How you going guys? So I just thought I'd do a little um, review on this compressor arm. So like, basically it's like, I don't know, what have we had it for a month or more? Um, now, um, I've used it quite a lot. Um, I sprayed each with it the other day on the front of the Jag. I sprayed two pack um, high build um, primer about four coats on the front of the jag as well um, and it's given me no problems um, it'll run a DA um, but it's okay it's not it's not quite big enough to run a DA without having to stop um, well you could but you bet you're down to sort of like that sort of 50 sort of PSI mark and the DA's starting to run slow, it's still working, but it's running slow, so like probably every sort of four minutes or thereabouts, probably really you need to stop for a little bit. Um, so like if you're just doing a panel or something like that, um, probably okay, but um, just if you're trying to sand a whole car, like DA a whole car down or something like that, or, or several panels, yeah, you'd have to stop every now and again um, and just let it keep up. But it's been, this has been a wicked compressor, like when I sprayed the other day, um, and it, it actually caught up and shut off a couple of times when I was spraying. Um, so like, I was spraying at about that 2 bar or 30 PSI, give or take, you know, roughly, um, without getting into details. But yeah, like it, I'm pretty sure when I was spraying the etch, um, it shut off once because like when I was spraying the HI really only was sort of just a couple of quick light coats over it just to make sure it had decent coverage and um, with the two pack um, with the primer or the high build um, I think it probably shut off a couple of three times so like it, you know, it it's got more than enough guts to run um, a spray gun uh, if you're probably if you're painting something really really big, um, it would probably be working a bit. Um, but if you're just doing a few panels, or if you just wanted to probably spray a car like this, um, I reckon it would do it. What's well, going to do it? No problems at all. Um, but yeah, like you, if you're like for a home handyman that's going to do a paint job every now and again, or a bit of sanding or something like that, it's Gonna nine times out of ten, it's gonna do you fine. Um, the filters on it are pretty good. Um, it's got like this sort of a nice little foam filters, almost like a that you find in a lawnmower. Um, real nice and fine, soft foam filter. Um, they're not really an open like you know sometimes they're quite open and porous filters. They're not like that. Like some of the junky compressors. Like I had a. Um, if you actually go back and look through my, some of my earlier videos, but a year ago, um, I had a, com a full bore compressor in Australia, which was a very similar design. Um, it was three horsepower V twin, um, and personally, I um, I think if it probably had better filters on it, it would have been fine. But I was using it; um, I was sandblasting underneath the bottom of my car off and on, um, and the rest of the time I was just doing a little bit of spraying. Um, and using a DA off it. Um, I had an extra e tank part way through, um, but it started um, wheezing and blowing oil through the lines, and I think it was mainly because it had poor filters in it. Um, they, they were quite open, sort of gore, gauzy sort of things, almost sort of, I've seen this similar sort of thing in a fish tank, to be honest. Um, but these are a nice little soft foam filter, so I think you shouldn't have any problems with them. Um, it's just one of those things, if you're doing dirty work, keep them clean, regularly clean, like yeah, probably every month or two or three months, you, you should be fine if you give them a good clean out. Um, in an environment like here, as long as you're not doing anything really dirty, um, if you probably blew them out every, every 12 months, you should be fine, give them a good clean out, but um, yeah. I've had no issues with it. Um, every time I've drained it, I've had it's cool at the moment, which is understandable. But I've had no water out of it, so it's not getting hot when I'm doing. Um, I've got a little bit of water out of the line, out of the little um, trap. 
I've got a little bit of water out of the trap every now and again, but I've had no, I don't think I've had any water come through airlines through a gun or a DA. Even using the DA, I don't think I've had any water come through the, um, like through the, you know, drip through out through the side of the DA. Um, I'm pretty sure I haven't had any water come through on the spray gun. That's been great. It's been a great little compressor. Um, I think it's air delivery is. It's about 12.5 or 12.7. I can't remember because we were looking at two different air compressors at the same time as, well, yeah, this and another one we were looking at when we bought this one, um, which was a, it was a Remington. Um, the only reason we didn't buy the Remington, um, it looked like it was very, very well made too. It had cast iron um, cylinders like this one. That's one thing that four bore one. Uh, in Australia, I'm pretty sure it didn't have cast iron cylinders. I think that was one of its letdown. I think they might have been just um, just cheap sort of st stuff from sort of. This is probably made in China too, but it's made to a better quality. Um, but yeah, this has got good, good nice cast iron um, cylinders, like that old one that's here, um, the yellow one. If you look through from the other videos when we've had and when this sort of stopped. But this is still free, um, we can possibly still get this going. I think we think it's the only capacitor, but it's a little bit light for what we need. But if we can get this going again, if we can tandem these up, maybe DAing or something like that, we'll run a, like a T line, they'll be perfect. But it'll run at no problems at all then, because this almost keeps up. But um, yeah, like it's got good cast iron cylinders in it, good filters. Um, yeah, and it's been it's been great. Um, yeah, spraying it sort of a couple of bar, it's been had no problems keeping up. As I said, it's shut off. So yeah, it's been a great little unit um, for what, for the time that we've had it. I would highly recommend it. Um, it's got a 36 month warranty with it, um, and it was trade wa trade warranty. So these guys have had this. Well, obviously tested these. And we'll guarantee them for um, for three years. So if you're in New Zealand um, and you want one, it's tool shed. That's the part number for this. We still had that part of the box because we, we we kept it for you know for making patterns or whatever a drip tray or something for underneath something when we're working old old stuff. But yeah, it's been brilliant. Um, can't fault it to be honest at the moment it's been great um, I don't think anything else I can tell you oh, some more specs on it if you can read that so yeah, yeah it's, it is it's been a good little unit I would highly recommend it um, for especially for a home a home shop um, that wants something that's going to do most things that you want to compress it for. Um, it's going to do pretty much everything you want. And it comes with a little water trap too, which is a bonus. Like that's well, wow, that's one of the small one of the smaller ones I've seen with a water trap on it. Um, I don't think that at that Remington. I could be wrong. I don't think that Remington had a water trap on it. Um, I think. We paid about four. I think Dad paid about four hundred fifty bucks or something thereabouts for this um, on special. I think they're in normally mid five hundreds. Don't quote me on that. But you'd have to again look at the, look up the tool shed. Um, I'm not sure if this is a rebranded or something else. Um, but yeah, as far as I know, I've done a little bit of googling. I can't find them anywhere else. Um, I was trying to see that maybe a brand like a you know like a the, the brand before these guys got them and, and sell them over here. So yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can tell you. Um, it's typical V twin compressor. It's a bit noisy, but um yeah, without going to um, one of those sort of like. You know, some of the more modern sort of screw type compressors that torture. Well, they, well, they say they are sort of a screw compressor that are quite quiet. But um, 
yeah, like it's, but it's a really good, nice little compressor. But as I said, like, you know, if you're running a DA, doing a lot of DAing, um, I'd probably get something a, a, a touch bigger. And I think these guys do do bigger compressors, but this is pretty much like a good all round um, home workshop or somebody that's doing the light work um, around in a workshop. You know, not really using um, big heavy air tools and stuff all the time, but I think this would cope, would do most things I want it to do, but yeah. But yeah, it's really handy if you're just doing a little bit of spraying and you wanted a little bit of sanding and use most general air tools without going to some really big gear, but I'd highly recommend it. Alrighty guys, cheers.